Hi, I'm Angela. I run Caddington Hedgehogs, uh, which is a hedgehog hospital, and I look after sick and injured hedgehogs uh, that the public, the RSPCA, all the vets bring round. First of all, I put the dust on and handle it to see if it's warm or cold. If it's cold, it needs to be put into a vivarium. Uh, there's heating in there. Um, I've got heat pads which is this, uh, which heats up in a microwave and remains warm for about eight hours, which is very good. Um, if it's cold, you can't actually give it fluids because it might inhale them. So what you do then is warm it up when it reaches a certain temperature or a good responsive temperature. You can then start giving it fluids, which is diorolite with a little syringe. Uh, I weigh them, they get a chart don't know how much of this you're going to be able to see. Let's pick one that looks good. And on that is the reference number, which is down here. The date, weight, whether or not the person wants it returning back where it came from, if they want me to find a release site for it, whether it's a male or female. And quite often they want it naming. So it's got a little section for its own little name there. And there's the weight chart, which uh, gets filled in every day, just so you can see how it's getting on. Once it's been assessed in here, it's then to either kept in here to be kept warm or taken outside into a hutch where I can keep an eye on it for the next few days. And as it improves and progresses in strength, it then gets moved down the garden to some runs I've got which give it a chance to get away from people and uh, become wild again. Um, actually but he's got a, he's just got the rem, rem, remnants of a little wound on his back he's keeping himself nicely covered up so that's good that's looking a little bit icky and he's going to need cleaning up so I'll have him out later on to, to clean that out he's not doing too badly he's got a bit tick there and you say it was a dog bite? A, a dog attacked him. Oh, that's what nasty. has happened, he's taken a, a big chunk out of his back, clipped the spines away, and he's ended up with uh, this back leg here. I think it was cellulitis he suffered from, which, which mimics a, a breakage. But he's actually using the leg quite well now, so I don't think it was broken, I think it was cellulitis. But he's, mm. he's doing very well. Apart from that, that clean that out again. But he's keeping cover, so that's that's good. Yep, should keep. And this one, this one's had a nasty, yucky wound to its neck. It's basically had its its throat split, if you like, from its ear right underneath its chin. Gosh, it's how would that happen? I don't know. He was found by the side of the road, and he's lost oh, lost that eye. The eyes prolapsed, so. I presume he's just been hit. Mm. Yeah, but he's responding well. He's been on antibiotics, as has the other one. And that's that's really healing up very well. He's got a bit of a, a dead eye there, though. Mm. So he's going to have to go to an enclosed garden. But all his limbs are intact, which is good. So uh, he's, he's on the mend. So he's doing very well. They come out to when they're ready for release, just need building up a little bit and getting used to being wild again. The runs have got wood chip in, so it gives them a chance to dig and uh, rediscover their natural habits. I've got um, two, two babies in here. One of them used to come to me when I called him, but because I've been away for the weekend, he seems to have forgotten me completely, which is what we really want. Adam, you're coming out. Adam. Totally ignore me. No, he's, he's forgotten me, so that's good. He's lost both his eyes. He's, he's lost one eye, and he's obviously had a, a bang to the head, the forehead, and the other eye popped out. 
so he's, he's lost his eyesight completely now. Um, and I think I found an enclosed garden for him because he's, he's really ready to go. And yeah, but uh, he can't be released back into the wild because you'll get day and night confused and start coming out during the day. He's a good old boy, isn't he? You good lad? He's a lovely healthy specimen. Mm. Lots of hedgehogs when they come to me. I mean they should be round like that. That is that is a sign. Curl up. That is a sign of a really healthy hedgehog that well, well fed from the eyes. <laughs> <laughs> um, usually they come and they're very flat, they're sort of elongated, which means they're very dehydrated and emaciated. But, but mm. he's a he's a good specimen apart from the eyes. They feed by smell, yeah. Um, but the eyesight keeps them out during at night time. So without sight, it's going to come out during the day, which makes him prone to dog attacks or magpie attacks or um, mm. what else? Just, just cats. Cats, cats. don't tend to do anything to a hog. Mm. Um, it's dogs mainly, foxes as well. If he comes out, let's say during the day, it's not going to do him any good. Can you put yourself away. He's just getting his bearings. Mm. Identify with the blind ones, their noses obviously take take over more from their eyesight and their nose waffles around. The hedgehogs don't more. like any people, they, they really <laughs> are not sociable creatures at all. They don't like each other, they don't like people, um, they swear and curse under their breasts the whole time, they mutter away. But so I think I've found a, a garden for him, but he's going to have to go with a sighted hedgehog. Mm. which will hopefully keep him um, out at night time and, and at bed during the daytime. That's it. Yeah, what happens is that the hog comes to me and I check it over and I decide whether or not I feel confident and capable of dealing with its injuries. But I had another one that had a broken front leg and although the vet offered to remove the leg, they don't function minus a front leg because they need it for digging, for climbing, for getting themselves back on mm. their feet again if they fall over. So I had to make the decision there to have it put to sleep, which was which was rather sad actually, because it had, uh, it had worked hard to keep itself going for so long, um, to make that final decision for it. Was a, I didn't like doing that, mm. but it wouldn't, it wouldn't have done itself any good really, just having one front leg. So it's, it's decision making as well whether or not to uh, pursue the injuries it's got or, or to just let it run its course. This is the hedgehog run. They actually use this as a track regularly and it's worn all the, the plants down. So you can just, just make out a little, little trail through there. Uh, there's two hedgehog nurseries in the bank back there. I don't know if they're being used or not. That's so under that grass, That's is under it? all the grass, yeah. They, they tend to have a, a home run of about three quarters of a mile. They don't have a territory, they have a sort of a home range. Uh, they're not territorial animals. If they see each other or get glimpses of each other, they'll just puff and puff and, and wander off. It's very rarely they actually have a standoff fight. Mm -hmm.